No one in the White House today knew Michael Flynn's guilty plea was coming, and the shock has ratcheted up the tension. Shortly before noon today, reporters began gathering in the briefing room for a scheduled event with Donald Trump and the Prime Minister of Libya. Now, the pool reporters, as they're known, began heading out, but were abruptly halted. After some confusion, the press was not allowed in. The White House blamed a scheduling error. Why the backtracking? Maybe because, according to Politico, no one in the White House was prepared. Quoting a source close to the White House, what they're freaked out about is that there are no leaks. Papadopoulos didn't leak. Flynn didn't leak. They feel like they can't trust anyone. Their own counsel didn't know. A source telling NBC News the president was, quote, blindsided by the news. According to ABC News, tr Trump and his legal team found out from news reports this morning. The Daily Beast reports today Flynn slipping was a shock, but not a surprise, and that for weeks the president had been feeling personally hurt at the prospect of Flynn turning on him. Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut sits on the Judiciary Committee, which is conducting its own probe of Russian interference in the election and potential links to the Trump campaign. Um, Senator, you had this to say earlier today. Uh, Congress must now match the special counsel's courage by approving legislation to shield him from the very real threat of improper political interference, as I and others have proposed. What do you mean by that? We propose legislation that would stop the president of the United States from firing the special counsel and it would shield the special counsel from any sort of political interference, which now seems increasingly threatening. Not just the president was blindsided, but all of his administration. And it is a shattering moment for the Trump presidency. Comparing it to Watergate, there's a real danger of another Saturday night massacre. We should send a signal on the Judiciary Committee of the United States Senate to approve legislation that will shield the special counsel, in effect, bar any firing without proper court order, so that the president is, in effect, discouraged or deterred from endangering our democracy with this constitutional confrontation and possible conflagration. Um, there, there is, uh, there has been um, some um, uh, enthusiasm for that expressed by certain Republicans. Although Mitch McConnell uh, had said he didn't think it was necessary earlier this year, uh, do you think you have the? Do you think you have the votes for that? We have bipartisan support for it. Uh, we have a number of Republican senators who have joined our bill in the Judiciary Committee. We have already had a hearing. We should have a markup and a vote on the floor of the United States Senate. Whatever its necessity weeks ago, now clearly it is urgent and necessary, as is the Judiciary Committee continuing its investigation of obstruction of justice with subpoenas for documents and witness testimony so the American people can hear them under oath and in public before the Judiciary Committee. And I might add just one other point Chris, which I think was important, a question that you asked just a few minutes ago. There's been a lot of talk about the Logan Act, which is a serious criminal statute. But the FBI was questioning Michael Flynn, not about the Logan Act or about his conversations with the Russians because of a possible violation of the Logan Act. They were investigating collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. That's the reason that the formal statement of offense filed by the special prosecutor says that he was charged and why he pl pled guilty. So it all is coming together, so to speak, the Russian collusion and obstruction. So, so uh, on the obstruction front, there's also been reports the president during the summer was sort of frantically calling various members of the Senate, trying to get them to back off, to stop their investigation. Obviously, the president went to James Comey and told him to back off Flynn. And when he didn't, he fired him. He says he had the Russian investigation in mind when he did so. Um, does Flynn's centrality resonate through the case for obstruction as well? It does very, very directly and profoundly importantly. We're still a ways from any kind of charges of obstruction against anybody in the Oval Office, but clearly we are at a Watergate moment here. What did he know and when did he know it? And that question applies not only to the president, but also to Jared Kushner, to Vice President Pence. What did they know as members of the transition team about these approaches to the Russians, about the collusion between the Russian government and the Trump campaign, as alleged, and that moment will have very dramatic resonance in the course of this investigation, and it has to be pursued, it is being pursued, 
by the special counsel. Um, do you think, uh, are you confident that Jeff Sessions uh, has not been directed by the president to interfere in any way? He was asked that question by Adam Schiff. Adam Schiff said Sessions refused to answer. Are you confident that the, the attorney general right now isn't being pressured by the president to, to, to interfere? I have no confidence whatsoever that the president is avoiding any kind of tactic in stopping this investigation. Clearly, he's resorted to some very direct threats and intimidation. He's called the investigation a hoax and a witch hunt, and he has privately berated Attorney General Sessions for recusing himself, as was required, and for failing to intervene before, and he has demanded a pledge of loyalty from his then FBI director, James Comey, and to drop the investigation. So this president has no clear sense of what the bounds are and what the norm should be legally or ethically. Senator Richard Blumenthal, thanks for your time. Thank you.